And welcome, strangers, to Talk Umentary, a show where we watch documentaries and then get together and talk about them. The most important thing is to remember that you're always safe. Whatever comes up, whatever happens when you begin this journey, you allow it. You don't have to like it, you just say, okay, rather than trying to run away from it. It's just about experiencing whatever comes up as it takes effect. In the intense part of this journey, the world that matters most to you will stop being the focus. The journey will take you to a place of infinite space. Just being there, you will experience positive mood, open-heartedness, love, transcendence of time and space. You might be thinking, is this safe? Will I come out of this at least as strong as I was when I walked into this situation? To that we say, do you think we would disrespect our own handiwork? Become more comfortable with living. Don't be afraid of dying. You are now connected to all of the atoms of the universe. Welcome Welcome to to Talkumentary. Hello, my friends, and welcome to another groovy episode of Talkumentary, where we're all amped up on psilocybin, and we've climbed to the top of the ethereal tree, and we're watching the storm clouds roll in while we guide ourselves into the amazing world of fungus. My name's Jeff. I'm your host today. Once again, I am joined by the lovely, the talented, the woman with impeccable taste in men, my wife, Nikki, a.k.a. Bird. Hi, Bird. <laughs> Hi, fun guy. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we got married earlier this month. And full disclosure, we're actually not married yet at the time of this recording. But by the time it releases, we will be. So, um, yeah, we get to kind of travel forward in time and pretend like we're married here for uh, a little bit. Listeners, Bird, the cat on your lap. Uh we have a couple very special guests with us today, don't we, Bird? We sure do. The one and only. <laughs> the the two and the only. The two and only. <laughs> We're here today to talk about the fantastic world of fungi with a couple of fungis. Nikki's brothers, my brothers-in-law, Brent and Andrew Lundin. Hello, sirs. Hello. 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 <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> Thanks for being here, Brent. Welcome to uh, to Omaha again and the documentary Den. Oh, yeah. We're so totally happy to be back. Good. Good. And you're probably going to be really happy to go back to Florida again uh, Where shortly, Where it's right? warm. Yeah, it's still warm here today, but um, uh. well, maybe not to you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Brent lives in Florida, so anytime you hear the uh, the episode that says Florida Man, that's uh, who we're talking that's about Brent. here. Yep. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Andrew, what's up, man? What's going Th- on? Thanks for being here. Yeah, man. Long time listener, full time, first time, uh, yeah, first time caller. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so let's talk about what we watched uh, with these fun guys. Uh, we all met up this evening to discuss a highly informative uh, and visually, I guess, breathtaking. Uh, 80 minute documentary released in 2019 called Fantastic Fungi. My mission is to discover the language of nature, and I believe nature is intelligent. There is a world under the earth full of magic and mystery. It holds the consciousness of nature's connection to all living things. You know, these mushrooms, they can heal you, they can feed you, they can kill you. It's not like a vegetable, and it's not like an animal, but it's somewhere in between. They support life, they convert life. As you're walking through, it's about 300 miles of fungi. Under every footstep that you take, and that's all over the world. The bulk of the organism is growing underground, and it's composed of these long threads called a mycelium. Almost everyone knows about the computer internet. The mycelium shares the same network design. It's amazing what we don't know about mushrooms. They really are a frontier of knowledge. You can filter water. You can create medicinal compounds almost on demand. They have incredible capacity to make things change very quickly. So I am super hopeful. The psychedelic members of the mushroom kingdom are fascinating. I have been a guide for around 350 psilocybin sessions. The most 
glorious part was that it made me feel more comfortable with living because you're not afraid of dying. We need to have a paradigm shift in our consciousness. What will it take to achieve that? We can heal the planet. We can build the future. And our world is fantastic. Fantastic Fungi is a descriptive time-lapse journey about the magical, mysterious, and medicinal world of fungi uh, and their power to heal, sustain, and contribute to the regeneration of life on Earth that began three and a half billion years ago. Fantastic Fungi was nominated for a Critical Choice Documentary Award for Best Science and Nature Documentary. And as far as what I could see on IMDb and Wikipedia and all that shit, uh, that was the only thing it was nominated for which is kind of interesting to me. Fantastic Fungi, certified fresh on Rotten Tomatoes with 100% tomato meter, which is pretty freaking sweet. Uh, 23 reviews and an audience score of 94 with over 50 ratings. Directed by Louis Schwartzberg, written by Mark Monroe, produced by Lynn Davis Lear, Louis Schwartzberg, and Elise Louis Stemp. Uh, narrated by Captain Marvel, Brie Larson, who I know is Brent's favorite uh, actor in Hollywood right now. Oh, I mean- correct sarcastically the best okay right. <laughs> dripping with the sarcasm of a thousand years um is yeah but anyway she did great in this in my opinion that's agreed yeah okay. yeah thank she you did. andrew thank you brent we streamed this on netflix this was a moving art production uh so i know we've had the moving art uh deal on in our home before uh, that that production company where they just kind of take extremely high definition visual images and put it to subtle music and you're supposed to be able to have it on in the background. So it's pretty sweet. And I could definitely see that in this doc. Uh, yeah. The, the, uh, the visuals were amazing. Uh, they were really good. Uh, quick warning before we get into this episode, if you haven't seen it, this, we may talk about some spoilers, but this is kind of one of those just informational ones. So I don't think you need to see this, before listening. Let's talk about why we chose to watch Fantastic Fungi this week. This was kind of a collective decision. Siblings in the room. How did we decide? I'm going to let you guys talk about how we decided because I had nothing to do with the decision of this. And I think there was a little back and forth, specifically probably between my bird and uh, her big brother Brent over there. Yes, I communicated uh, through the digital waves of the telephone to bird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. We decided that we both like um, talking about medicine, mm -hmm. advancements in medicine, what they're doing, uh, what we could do, especially when it comes to the more natural For things that we could do. For sure. Uh, and this documentary definitely uh, checked all the boxes. That yeah, know, checked the boxes. Yep. And and inspired those thoughts. Was so, this was this your first choice for a documentary? It was the choice that <laughs> it was the choice that good old good old Nikki over here uh, proposed, and it was a perfect choice right off the bat. Yeah, very good. Um, I I heard tell that you might be interested in some like the more conspiracy style documentaries, Brent. Uh, would that be true? Uh, that would be definitely true. And I even wrote a conspiracy on my notes <laughs> I bet here. You did <laughs> that correlates with this documentary? <laughs> Bird, tell us why why this is one that that appealed to you as opposed to a more conspiratorial one. Um, I mean, basically, I have always been interested in natural healing, as you know, um, especially when we know the damage that some pharmaceuticals do and the long term yeah. need and requirements of some of them. So I definitely like to watch things that inspire me and don't give me anxiety <laughs> like conspiracy documentaries do. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I'm, I'm actually really glad that this is one that we decided to watch together. And this in the run of our show so far, this is the first documentary that we've covered on our show that I was able to sit and watch with the entire crew that I talked about it with. Normally we do it kind of in our own homes or in our own spaces, or our own time. Um, so it was fun to watch it with you all and uh, and then come back and talk about it. So I think that's a, a, fun, a fun thing. Um, yeah, so not necessarily the easiest decision to make. Uh, on what we what we landed on, but here we are talking about funguses, fungus eyes, fungi, <laughs> fun fungus guys, the funnest guys. Um, Andrew, 
had you seen this before we uh we watched it or was this the first time you had seen this one uh definitely first time i've seen it i haven't even heard of it until this was brought up and yeah i was definitely very intrigued by the premise of the whole documentary just yeah. with the yeah with the, the, the healing uh, powers and all that kind of stuff it was yep. very intriguing and um what were your a, sorry go ahead finish oh it was just definitely a good watch for yeah sure. What were your predictions going into it? Did you, did you have the, like, Hey, Andrew, we're watching fantastic fun guy. What did you think like you were going to be watching? I thought it was really going to be more on. Would you call me? Call me what? Mora. <laughs> no, I, I, I think it was going to be oh, more man. on like, would you call me the food at the side of things okay. and like how restaurants use mushrooms yeah. and just how humans consume mushrooms and i thought it was going to be more on like the how we ingest them as like nutrients right um versus what it ended up being about which was the effect that it plays on the planet and how yeah. intertwined fungus is with our entire yeah. ecosystem yeah absolutely like I, that was totally something new i had no idea yeah. that that was yeah. that was a thing and i thought yeah i thought it was going to be more on like how we consume them as a species yeah i think the the thing that su surprised me about this uh well i guess the medicinal properties of the mushrooms um and the fungus wasn't really surprised to me because i know nikki's talked about it quite a bit um in our house um but i think the part of this documentary that surprised me the most was kind of what you were alluding to was um the mycelium network the the kind of web of communication and connectedness that the uh the fungus communicated underground and not just with each other but also with the trees and uh they were they used that network not only to communicate but to share nutrients and things like that i thought that was i thought that was insane definitely um i mean it really it, it reminded me of the movie avatar yeah um how everything in that movie you know the whole thing was all of the the trees, the living beings, the yep. entire planet of Pandora mm -hmm. is interconnected, and I really got that that same vibe from this. Yeah, um, and I just found that very interesting. Yeah, Brent, and uh, even when they mentioned uh, just on that same on that same premise, um, how connected it is with the planet, uh, and the spokesperson in the documentary talking about you take one step in a forest every step you take in a forest there's yeah. 300 feet yeah of mycelium underneath you that is just mind-blowing i had Insane. no idea that yeah it's a it's an entire world that that the layman just walking through it doesn't know is there and it's so much more intricate than we might have than we might have uh realized it had so has anyone here watched last of us or played the game yeah, played the yeah, game. Yeah, <laughs> so it it was cool to see the the interconnectedness with the virus that they used in that show in that game. Uh, you know, so when you stepped, they used the actual mycelium network to to communicate with the other infected. To so it was very cool um, to see that they that sh that game actually did its research yeah. on some stuff to and yeah maybe they watched this documentary. Who knows? Um, yeah, so let's get into some of our favorite or least favorite details about fantastic fungi. But first, I'm going to give a quick and decaying synopsis uh, for this documentary. This will be even quicker than most of them because it it it's pretty, you know, self explanatory There's really no way to, to, to wrap it up besides there's a lot of mushrooms and they're really cool looking and they do a lot for our planet. But um, so imagine an organism that feeds you, heals you, reveals nature's mysteries and could help save the planet today and it's right under your feet. Fantastic Fungi, with the subtitle The Mushroom Movie, combines beautiful time-lapse cinematography, absolutely stunning CGI, and an overview of the biology, environmental roles, and various uses of fungi. Visual affectations aside, Fantastic Fungi is an engaging look at the scope of an organism that is so much more than a pizza topping or an ingredient in beef stroganoff or a disgusting little booger that's in some kind of a, a can uh, that makes me gag thinking about eating them shits. Um, the spec with spectacular footage of growth uh, and decay and impassioned speeches about magic of mushrooms, this documentary 
uh, is a treat for the eyes and the ear. Do you guys agree? Absolutely. Agreed. Uh, yeah, totally. Agreed. Um, so standout moments, bird, let's start with you. When, what stood out first and foremost to you? What was one of your favorite or least favorite parts of this documentary? Um, so you already know I'm kind of a, a brain junkie. Oh. And if I won the lottery, I would just spend my life researching the brain. So <laughs> yeah. the part that I like the most is how the mycelium is extremely similar to our brain with the electrical impulses and electrolytes even oh, and yeah. the way that it communicates and neurons firing and basically how that correlates to how it heals our brain yep um the way it helps to rewire our brain uh so i really like those correlations between nature and our brains and how they Certain vegetables out there, certain parts of the earth tend to mimic what the insides of our body look like or how they work. Yeah. So I really nerded out on that. Yeah. And not to get too absolutely trippy, um, a, a disclaimer, at least I'm speaking for myself, I am not high on psilocybin right now. I know I mentioned that we all are, but um, I can't speak to the others because I was not with them all day, but but <laughs> I am not uh, high right now, but I do... To get a little trippy and to speak on what what you said, it kind of shows a little bit of evidence, in my opinion, in the uneducated mind, that there may be a maybe a little evidence to the evolutionary theory and the uh, because if nature is doing the same things that our brains are doing and and that connectedness in that network and the the creating of neural pathways and all that and they even showed how similar that is to that of the uh fungal kingdom i guess uh to me that's like okay there's you're you're not that similar without having come from the same place. So maybe we're all just walking, talking mushrooms and <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and also that the further we seem to be getting from nature, the sicker we're getting. So the interconnectedness and similarity of humans and nature, I think is just another thing to touch on and that made my brain just start taking away yeah. hearing about this. Yeah. Yeah, there was that part when they were talking about the experiment on the trash. And that was what really yeah. uh, kind of blew me away that, you know, they do this experiment and they're just using our current methods right. for breaking down trash and uh, covering it with tarps. And then they use the other experiment with putting the uh, mushroom and fungus, you yeah. know, properties and the spores on that trash yep. for the same amount of time. They come back teeming with life. Birds are coming down to get the little worms. Yep. It didn't smell. It was actually able to break down mm -hmm. the oils and yeah. heal Na naturally. It could have been a, if they left it there long enough, you would never even have known it was trash. Right. Being able to uh, use these properties, which are completely natural and complete, you know, found in our natural world, to break down a absolutely horrifying thing that we have done to our planet with with these. Uh, non-biodegradable waste. And, you know, I think they even talked about in the, the piece that you were discussing uh, that that was like there was some diesel waste in there, and fossil fuels, things like that, and where everything else turned into a stinking pile of, you know, uselessness and decay. Well, not even decay, just... uh Ew, sludge. <laughs> yeah. This turned into having its own ecosystem to where animals came and bugs and mushrooms and all that. So I, I agree. That was definitely a standout in, in my mind. How about you, sir, Andrew? Um, so kind of like what Nikki or bird was, was touching <laughs> on, um, you know, with just how interconnected, uh, I, I just didn't really realize how interconnected we were. And like, like you said, how disconnected we are from nature and the, the, further we get away from nature, the sicker we get as a species. I mean, look at all of the illnesses that just were not around. Mm -hmm. And, but then you look at, you know, just with the way that they were talking about how this, this fungus, all of this fungus is like the digestive system of nature. Yeah. And, but not only that, it's also the building blocks of mm -hmm. life. 
And that's that's what was like really trippy and to touch. I am also not high on, <laughs> on psilocybin uh, as well. I. Uh, I'm, <laughs> I'm not saying I've you. never been, yep. but uh, at the moment, no. Um, but I just find that that sort of thing very interesting. And yeah, um, yeah, just how basically fungus is works much like a human body. Like our our bodies are built to digest reuse turn things into fuel you know we take calories i'm not a expert on that you know but our bodies process yeah. food and turn it into energy and store fat and that's exactly what the fungus is doing they were speaking the on that like the, yeah. it literally takes the nutrients stores it underground like stores it in its yeah it, it's just insane that that is like you said walking through the forest and, right. and there's 30 feet of 300, any 300 yeah. feet yeah. of of this neural network essentially it's mm -hmm. just mind-blowing yeah. i have it's no our, idea that that was just under our feet this yeah. entire time it's our actual upside down yeah oh yeah that's you mentioned that when we were watching <laughs> then they had the cool visuals that sort of <laughs> yeah. flipped to show us what they looked like which by the way the animations in this film were freaking sweet um yeah. but it did look something out of stranger things <laughs> yeah, and, yeah and the one fungus that they showed that literally looked like the demogorgon oh, demogorgon oh, yeah. yeah that was creepy that you remember what that up. one was called i don't I I even know remember. if they said it yeah um but speaking of mushrooms which we've been doing for the last 15 minutes um i meant to to go into this before we got into this but whatever we'll we'll plug it in here now um before we get any further into it, I did get onto the uh, Fantastic Fungi website, uh, and there is a little quiz on there that uh, will assign everybody a mushroom. Okay, so I went and I took the liberty of, based on the descriptions they had of the different mushrooms and their uh, personalities, so to speak, I went ahead and took the liberty of assigning you guys each a mushroom, and I'm going to do my best to refer to you only by your mushroom name for the remainder of this episode. <laughs> <laughs> I will fail, but I'm going to try. Uh, Bird, we're going to start with you. Uh, you live in your head a lot, uh, which is often full of new ideas and bursts of creativity. Uh, you prefer deep conversations over small talk. And like this mushroom, you have a softer side. You're full of wisdom and inspiration. You, my beautiful bird, are the lion's mane. Knew it. Yeah. And thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. They talked about lion's mane in the, the documentary about how it it can directly affect and correct me if I'm wrong, because you know more about but directly affect the neural pathways to help with anxiety and depression and things like that. Which yes. Is fucking crazy. <laughs> and that but, is a mushroom that's in the mushroom coffee I drink every single morning. Mm, mm. Gross sounding, but I'm sure that it's good. sounds disgusting. Uh <laughs> breezy, Brent. Uh you're a you are creative and spiritual fuel, my friend. Uh, you have ample energy when needed to fulfill the desires of your brain and body. Like this mushroom, you can seem intimidating and elusive, but you're actually quite accessible for those who you let to get close enough. You, my brother-in-law, you are cordyceps. Cordyceps, it kind of makes sense. And yeah. just to throw it out there, um, I ate mushrooms once. <laughs> Many years ago, and it never went away. <laughs> and I am still tripping balls. And to they this day. actually <laughs> talked about that in the documentary. Yeah, they did. <laughs> uh, Andrew, just like this mushroom, you are more than you seem, sir. Uh, the people closest to you, your inner circle, understand your true purpose, while most only know your highlight reel. Your humility lets you fly under the radar at times, but you're always your most authentic self without scrutiny you are the shiitake yes <laughs> yes the shit the shit take the shit perfect that the word shit is in my little brother's mushroom name <laughs> he's the little shiitake <laughs> i mean that's pretty accurate though yeah i so, will just go by the shit the, the shit the all right <laughs> uh so and for my name uh, like this mushroom, and, and uh, you guys correct me if you feel differently about my own description of myself. Uh, like this mushroom, I am the strong, I am a strong supporter of sleep and rest. 
<laughs> being that I nap every single freaking day. Um, I'm strong, resilient, versatile, and the people in my my life know me as a reliable as reliable and respected. At least I hope. Um, I am unflappable. I'm an old soul and a natural leader. I am the reishi mushroom. Uh, so we've got lion's mane, we've got cordyceps, we've got little shit talky, and reishi. <laughs> I'd unflappable. say you're unflappable. <laughs> Definitely unflappable. We yeah. said that at the same time. Uh, I love what that. Is unflappable. I don't know about Can the anybody strong answer part, that? No, uh, well, I, I'm odorous. <laughs> strong I've never odorous. seen him flap. Odorous. So, I mean, we're and, good there. So, and yeah, if, you, if ne you've never seen him flap, then he is unflappable, most yeah. likely. Yep. Um, okay. So that's us. There was our mushroom counterparts. Um, you know, for me, let's get back, getting back into the, the documentary itself. Uh, to me, this was a visual documentary all day. Um, although there was a lot of really good information, a lot of good educational stuff, uh, without the visuals, and this would have been a much shorter documentary because they focused on that a lot. The, na the moving art name said it all. Um, the amount of money tied up in the types of Camera equipment and filming equipment must have been astronomical because those yeah. are some high end cameras. Um, but they did really get a lot of cool shots of of growing mushrooms and then decay. And there was a scene where a mouse was decaying, oh. and the thing looked like it was boiling over this time lapse. I have a question for you guys though, and I don't know if you'll be able to answer it. How the hell do they get sound from time lapse? Because I know when those like mushrooms were growing and pushing through, it was like. Is it added afterwards? Is that a fucking effect or is that, that real sound? Do you know? Speaking from the limited knowledge I would have on videography yeah. um, and some people I know that do some mm -hmm. uh, video work for their Instagram businesses and stuff like that, oh. I think they're adding that sound okay. afterward. That's my yeah. interpretation of that. Uh, Info.documentary at gmail.com. If anyone out there is a time-lapse videographer and you know uh, how – that is done. If it's in post or if it's something like that, uh, shoot us an email or reach out on social media or something like that uh, so that we can answer that question. Um, Andrew, what what stood out to you? Talk about some of the, some things that stood out to you if you've got anything else. Um, I mean, what really stood out to me uh, was really the stuff on how some of the effects like on that lion's mane, I had no idea that this fungus exists. And I personally in my life have struggled with very, very deep depression mm -hmm. and really bad anxiety, crippling anxiety. Um, that was about 10 years ago. And I just, I didn't know anything like that existed. Yeah. And when they they were talking about going through those, when those doctors were working with these people, uh, like basically putting them on a dose of psilocybin, basically making them trip mm -hmm. and then having sensory deprivation, covering their ears, covering their eyes, having them explain the feeling that they were, right. they were feeling in that moment and how it like helped them through the one woman, she was um, sick with cancer and mm -hmm. how it made her feel warm and loved. And like, there was just like this, this light, like this essence, this, feeling of uh, another being she and went, it was just so deep she like went all real from, hippy dippy she went she? really hippy yeah. but i mean it's that was a that was an actual feeling that she yeah. had and you know some people when you think of getting high on mushrooms like it's just oh it's this trippy thing it's like you're seeing purple elephants right. and you're yep. just seeing all this crazy stuff but i mean that's not what they were seeing at all they two separate people basically seeing the same thing um, and we might touch on this, but that was just how they both had a very similar experience being two different people with two different, ba two yeah. different backgrounds, two different experiences, two, for two different issues. She was, ha right. was struggling with cancer. He had really bad anxiety and yet they both experienced almost identical visual, mm -hmm. uh, experiences seeing almost like a kaleidoscope. They, they did that a lot in the documentary where they had this kaleidoscope and yeah. that's what they were explaining. Right. Well, and then not just the visual, but they also had an extremely similar emotional reaction. Right. You know, that feeling of that love, they both kind of described that very similar outcome of like this contentment 
Yep. You know, they're struggling to find the will to feel okay with living. And right. now they have this, you know, very, of course, controlled experience with yeah. the uh, sensory deprivation and uh, the microdose of the psilocybin. And here and they I are died. now yeah. having identical results. Right. I yeah. mean, when we talk about the medicinal purposes, the natural healing, I mean, that's what you're looking for. You take Tylenol to get rid of this headache. Right. Everybody has a similar experience. So I look at that as like successful results. Agreed. Two people, two m- mental uh, states of mind, mm-hmm. same result, yeah. getting to this contentment of life. That seems like that's what it's for. Uh, mm-hmm. Sign me up. <laughs> sign me up for that. Yes. I mean, yes. I'm not I'm not a recreational drug user myself, but I'm going, I, I have, and Nikki and I have talked about this several times, but I have no hesitation popping my anxiety pill every morning that who knows what the fuck is in it when I could, if there was something natural, you know, I... I, I, I know there has to be certain types of like uh, um, environments for things to grow and whatnot. But if I had this thing growing in my backyard and I knew that it was was going to help me feel better every day and I knew that I couldn't overdose, I wasn't going to get the shits or get headaches or get dizzy <laughs> because of a, a side effect from it. Fuck yeah, I'm eating that shit. Yeah. I don't want to trip out for uh, for fun necessarily. but And I think that that's kind of... You know, I don't know what what tangent we want to go on here, but I think that's what I think needs to be solved with all of this, because you said I'm not a recreational drug user. Yeah. But I think what is wonderful about this documentary and the research that's Mm -hmm. been done um, from very credible giant hospital systems such as Johns Hopkins Mm -hmm. is they're showing that. It shouldn't be a recreational drug that right. people are having to um, hide to help heal themselves. It should be something that we are able to do and to be given and to have some assisted therapy in across the board in all states so that it's not something we're hiding to take in order right. to heal. And But they even talked about why is it not? If we have so much proof that this helps and this is so helpful and it's so natural and it's so helpful to not only our bodies, but our brains and our, and our environment. Why is that not more accessible? Well, the, the plain and simple answer is money. Uh, the big pharma does not fucking make money. If, if this is actually helping people and getting them off their, their drugs. Right. It's like, I take a Prilosec because I have to right. every single day, mm-hmm. you know, is there, you know, there's 1.5 million types of fungus. Tw- over 20,000 of them are mushrooms. Yeah. But is there a mushroom that can help that? Probably. I mean, we're, <laughs> right. we're, we're carrying these other things. And just to be on that tangent of mm-hmm. the, the pharmaceutical industry, you know, I think most people could agree whether you think of conspiracies or not. You told me uh, or Go you mentioned it. that I like the conspiracies. We're going on a trip here yeah, together, my friend. Uh, <laughs> you know, the, reality is that there's, uh, the reality is there's no money in cures. The mushrooms yes. are so abundant. Um, there's just no money to make. If I yep. could just take a little, um, you know, something very natural that I could have in my backyard every mm-hmm. day, well, and that I could produce on my own with little to no effort. Right. Well, now they don't, now Prilosec's out of business. Right. Big so, Pharma goes to the tank and, and there, and there went a whole lot of people's, uh, fortunes, um, yeah, which um, fuck them, but you know. And well. the documentary mentioned that some of the sessions for major depressive, disorder Mm -hmm. um so people with um severe depression it can basically reverse depression in those people in one to two treatments of a higher dose of psilocybin assisted therapy so if you can pretty much rid them of it for about 12 months which is the average time frame according to johns hopkins um and also what they quoted in the documentary then <laughs> big pharma is not going to make the money if you're not taking their pharmaceutical right. Prozac every single day of your life for the right. next 10 years or however long. And so, probably and probably your your the effects of taking a long term medication like that is also lining the pockets of the next guy who has the 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 business of 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 uh, alleviating the symptoms of the side effects that you so and and then you're on all these drugs that is paying a lot of people a lot of money keeping insurance companies in business keeping pharmaceutical companies in business keeping hospitals in business which obviously we want those to stay in business but if the if the uh the focus was taken from uh the 
pharmaceutical to the more natural. And with these kind of results, I mean, that's better for humanity, but not better for the people making money. And that's, you know, that's a, just a really interesting like thought because, you know, Brent is really into conspiracies more than some people, <laughs> but you know, it really does have you think I've been a victim of being on a medication for a very, very, very long time. Mm -hmm. And then finally meeting a doctor who completely was just blown away that I've been taking this, this medication. It was this medication called propranolol. It's I, it was in my early twenties. Mm -hmm. Um, I have a, what's called tachycardia, which is just, I have a faster heart rate. It's not deadly. It's not dangerous. It's just my resting heart rate is faster. So they put me on this propranolol, which is supposed is designed to slower the heart rate. Mm -hmm. This was in the midst of playing hockey four, five, six nights a week sometimes. And then I did just, I started feeling really, really crappy and like feeling really tired and I've been on this propranol for like 10 years at this time Jesus. and I go in to see my, the, my new doctor and she's just like, what medications are you taking? And I, and I say, Oh, propranol. And she's like, why the fuck? <laughs> I think she even said, fuck, oh. why are in the fuck are you taking propranolol? That is meant for a sedentary elderly person who has heart issues where they need to keep their heart rate down in a fucking old folks home. And I'm blown away. I've been taking this medication for tw 10, 20 something year old years. Male. Yeah. Oh 10 years God, I'm taking dude. this medication and she just was like, stop taking that now. So it's like conspiracy or not that happened to me. That was a right. real, that was a real experience. And that really made me lose faith in just medicine. Uh, yeah. Really? I believe in medicine. I take two freaking antidepressants right now and sure. I still feel depressed and I still yeah. feel anxiety and it doesn't, it, you know, it, just to hear that there's possible. Right. And the solutions and, and the, the idea that, there, you know, on this show, we've talked about different things from the criminal, and this this is a little side tangent, but the criminalization, the, the intentional criminal criminalization of things like, uh, well, just race, for example. And, uh, you know, this could very well, you know, they talked about the, uh, the quote unquote, uh, escaping the lab of psychedelic mushrooms, magic mushrooms, and how it turned into this craze in the 60s and 70s and how it kind of demonized it in a way. I can't, I, I'm not t generally, Brent, I'm not really a conspiracy theorist myself, but it's hard to look at that and go, well, there probably was some, because even today, me sitting here right now in this basement, because of the the indoctrination that I've gotten throughout my life, when I hear you could take a psychedelic mushroom in order to to heal these things. My initial reaction is to go, yeah, but I don't do drugs. Yeah, the fuck I do. I take one every day. <laughs> but so I'm I'm calling my own bullshit on that. But like, I don't know. There, there I can just feel that there's an indoctrination or a a. Uh, I guess that's the right word. You you a, a negative stigma. Yes, a stigma that you know is hard to shake. Um, you know, so and anyway. what's the difference between this drug and that drug? Right. And why is this like, you know, on the more conspiracy side of things, like why isn't this being more talked about? Why is this the first time watching this documentary that I'm hearing about lion's mane being a, a potential cure for depression and, yeah. and like the healing powers and how this, this, this affects the people's brains, like almost permanently like they were talking about two three sessions max and the the one the <laughs> one you're doctor done. talking about literally he's fucking talking about that talking about taking it's the 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 time of taking a medication for the rest of your life like i'm doing now i've been on citalopram mm -hmm. for 15 years and it's like if i if i stop taking that for one day i am like my brain feels foggy. I feel really fucking mm -hmm. weird. And it's just, it's so odd that, Oh, and now we, there's potential that we could have a medication or a drug a out there where I take it. fucking <laughs> two or three of these pills and it heart re hardwires my brain. Uh, imagine permanently, permanently. Yeah. And imagine if that's out there, they're not going to allow that to be hell. No, they're not going to allow that to be. Well, it's just like public. the speaker's mom, you yeah. know, 
Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, I don't think they mentioned the number of doses, but uh, obviously she's not taking them anymore because mm-hmm. she doesn't. She had breast cancer, and now she doesn't have breast cancer. Right? What the fuck? <laughs> and here we are, all yeah. dumping all this money into cancer research. Yeah. And that's the leading, you know, one of the leading things that's being funded is cancer research. And yet here we have yep. these researchers that have essentially found a cure, basically <laughs> evidence. Right. We have here she is. Right. Breast cancer one day. And now she does these treatments with just mushrooms. And I think we can all sit here and say that if. Big Pharma wants to slap a price on psilocybin. We'd all be willing to pay. Yeah. Go ahead. I'd rather pay for that. Right. Than your treatment that sucks. Right. Yeah. And yes. Give us a cost. Name a cost. But we would rather have something that works. Yeah. For that cost. You know, from the time we were children and going, you know, I hope someday they find a cure for cancer. Well, the the reality as as growing up and and learning about conspiracies and watching things like this and and you'd say if they found a cure for cancer they'd lock that shit up so goddamn tight and never let anyone have access to it cuz they'd stop making money right big capital t they the people out there that are making the money and the decisions and the lobbyists and the the politicians and all this that are that have a a dog in that fight and who would lose their their legacy quote unquote and their their fortunes if they did create a cure i guarantee that you know in the in somewhere in this world there's a vault or or a bunch that have these fucking cures that are never going to see the light of day because they they would they would bankrupt these major corporations and they're not going to let that hurt the economy happen. technically yeah yeah for sure but guess a price what on yeah. human life technically but guess what people would be healthier and happier so fuck them burn it to the ground i don't care anyway um <laughs> <laughs> one of the thing one of the things that i thought was crazy and and we actually started talking about some of these characters in the in the film was the the people who did uh, submit to the guided and and um, controlled psilocybin trips in order the people that were at Johns Hopkins because they had uh, what do they call them uh, uh, diseases or whatever it was or cancers that were going to essentially end their life and one thing that we had talked about being a little bit strange was we kept waiting for people for them to say there was this had cured them or this had helped their cancer or something. Yeah. And the, a little bit of a shock was they didn't really do that. They basically said, no, now I'm just more okay with dying <laughs> as opposed to I got better. It's this made me more okay with not getting better, which is very beneficial, I would think. But it was also to me kind of like, a, oh, God, that feels dark as shit because like – they really spun it like we're going to present to you this. Yeah, yeah. They're healed, yeah. and it's like you know what no, it reminds me of. Content. Yeah, yeah. Content, which is still great, but yeah. What it reminds me of is um, religion. You know, somebody <laughs> yeah. who is, and we can go down that path. Yeah. But I mean, that's what it really felt like. That's what they were explaining when you talk to somebody who is really, mm-hmm. really religious and believes in God and heaven and all of that, and they. You know, there's been uh, stories where people die and come mm-hmm. back and they they explain like they felt loved and they saw yep. this light and they're seeing that same thing. So was that what they were experiencing? And maybe we're just tapping into because that was right. referenced in this documentary is yep. it's something that we're like tapping into the neural network of this fungus. Like we came from fungus. We right. we came from the same single cell organism when it split off there was fungus and what became human life and we are from the same molecule and so when we die we are now tapped back into that same neural network that is this fungus like avatar i mean it's microverse in the microverse like that is just that's so trippy that is that was the trippiest part of the whole thing is yeah the trippiest part of a trippy documentary. Trippy documentary. <laughs> um, Bird, what else you got over there on your on your endless notes? Oh, anything you want to get into? I mean, I 
I guess like along the vein of what they were just talking about is um, if we're talking about how the documentary, some of the different parts we liked and disliked, mm -hmm. um, and you kind of mentioned how they kind of botched giving the results of certain mm -hmm. things. Um, but, you know, with a lot of research that I've been reading about since we watched it, there are many different types of mushrooms that are healing yeah. that do show anti-cancer properties, yep. um, anti-dementia properties, Alzheimer's, um, anxiety, depression, all of that. Um, so it would have been nice if they would have included those results because it is yeah. founded research out there. Yep. Uh, so it would have been nice if they would have included that. Agreed. I, I think that there could have been a lot of benefit in showing some of the statistics and things. This, Like I said early on, this was a very visually, uh, uh, this was this was an eye massaging <laughs> a documentary, you know, that I agree some educational aspects and some statistics would have been very helpful to push this, uh, I guess, agenda forward. And uh, same thing. I mean, I was looking for kind of specificity that mm -hmm. got there almost in some cases, yeah. but then they really just kind of left it hanging. They started talking about the use of like biopesticides. Yeah. And then they just kind of mentioned it as simply as I am now. Right. And, and basically left it behind. They started talking about this mushroom of immortality that mm -hmm. has been around for uh, now 3000 years on top right, of some mountain right. and if as long as it has food it's going to live forever and right. yet they didn't really expand on that but they kind of went off on this segue to uh when you we mentioned earlier about you know the mushrooms left the lab and yep. we get on this little we see a visual of now Woodstock yeah. after just seeing <laughs> yeah. this beautiful 4K right. mushroom growing. Now and we've then we got just see vintage people Woodstock. at Woodstock yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. footage. So I thought that was a, a little weird. And I really wish that we would have had some more specificity on mm -hmm. on the lion's mane and yeah. cordyceps. And it, yep. I wish they would have trusted the audience that, hey, we're smart enough to learn these words. Yeah. Tell us some more specifics about these things, because that's... I, I want to hear about these biopesticides. I mean, that's crazy. Right. Speaking of biopesticides, we didn't really talk about the kind of the most the main character of this, uh, which was a guy named. I Paul. was just waiting because okay. how goofy he was. <laughs> yeah, pa Paul Stamets. He's an ex-logger who became a mushroom enthusiast. Uh, he's now one of the most credited uh, mycologists in the world, from what I could tell. Um, for several innovations and breakthroughs uh, from the science of fungi. We talked a lot about how it's impressive because this gentleman was a uh, an, a, a non-college educated scientist, essentially mycologist that um, is doing these insane breakthroughs in scientific research and things like that, That and he never went to school for it, which is fucking crazy. Um, he invented a, a Trojan horse style pest control system, which was so cool to see in their animations where the little termite uh, who normally would have been stopped at the door by other little termite guards. Uh, and uh, But he found a way to uh, time delay the, the, the fungus. The yeah, the growth. Thank you. Uh, but until that termite got into the nest and was able to infect, quote unquote, the entire thing and that's done without the use of harsh chemicals <laughs> yes yeah it's insane it's and it's really cool um plus he also wore a really cool little mushroom hat every time that he went to like a ted talk or something <laughs> oh, like yeah. that it's so <laughs> nerdy but it's like hey that's kind of fun i guess i mean uh, he just it was a guy who fell in love with mushrooms and we i don't even think we touched on the part where he grew up when he was a kid he had a very very bad stutter and he ended up i don't know i don't even think he brought up where he came upon this bag of mushrooms right. is what he said. <laughs> uh, but he had this, he just magically had this bag of mushrooms. He yeah. took the entire bag and he's, which yeah, you're supposed said, to put a couple on a piece of pizza, not eat the entire bag. He, he said, Everybody knows he said, that. I didn't know what the right dosage was. So I just <laughs> took the whole bag. I figured that was a dose. Bullshit, dude. You, you knew that the full bag was going to be a lot, but. but he got so he, he had such an experience. Yeah. And he t like, like, I think he said this, he was like, I told myself a hundred times, hundreds of times, thousands of times, stop stuttering, stop stuttering, stop stuttering. And it, it like hardwired his brain somehow, mm -hmm. because the next day he had a story about seeing a woman that he was like really attracted to. And mm -hmm. he was always looking down and this was, you know, just 
his story. And literally the following day, his stutter was gone. Right. And how do you explain that? Right. How is that explained that he just takes this mm -hmm. mushroom, tells or himself, 20. basically rewires his brain yeah. to stop stuttering? Yeah. And that's because psilocybin can penetrate the central nervous system. And it then functions very similar to our brain. And that is why yeah. this documentary is amazing yep. to destigmatize and demystify mm -hmm. mushrooms. Well, and they even mentioned that um, you know, some of these mushrooms can actually stimulate nerves to regrow. Yeah. I mean, for someone like me that has had eye issues and nerve issues in my eye yeah. uh, and wear glasses, I mean, are you telling me that there's a potential way to synthesize? some of these mushrooms and just regrow these nerves and to do and, it without surgery and without like intense chemicals or, or uh, medicines and things like that. That's and then a, maybe end up hugging and kissing a tree after. I mean, it sounds like a really good time. <laughs> the dude fucked the tree. <laughs> yeah, he, he definitely, definitely did. Okay. So yeah. anyway, but, okay. all right. So, and to touch on what, what bird, uh, I'm sorry, what, what lion's mane and cordyceps over here, we're talking about <laughs> the psychedelic mushrooms. The, the piece of this that maybe stood, stood out the most, to me was when they said there are receptors in our human in the human brain that f exactly fit what psilocybin provides when when you take it it's it's like having a a specific puzzle piece in your brain that you've never been able to find the other piece to and this mushroom fits it perfectly so what he mentioned in there was so does that mean that a we are supposed to be the primate the, the 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 primates that we are are we supposed to be doing this in order to give our brain the full capacity that it's supposed to have and how much further along would human evolution be if we had been taking these things as part of our normal diet and our normal routines well right and that's one thing they kind of uh touch on and this gets into a little bit of the conspiracy sure. of life of yeah. course, uh, but they cordyceps. actually do mention and i was really happy cordyceps. to hear this um <laughs> uh, yeah this is cordyceps coming at you um, <laughs> um, <laughs> coming at you live with the cordyceps very very creative um uh, i thought it was really cool to hear some validity behind the idea that um, the more nomadic version of the primates that we are, yeah. that there is a possibility that, okay, we're roaming the earth and then we eat this mushroom, this kind of puzzle piece yep. in the ecosystem that expanded their minds and gave them sort of that edge because right. they even mentioned that, you know, we study this evolution, we know these certain uh, you know, we know kind of like certain milestones mm -hmm. and how long things take. And then there's just this few million years where it seems to just jump. It jumped, right. Really, really quick. So and it's it a bit stands, of a stretch, but it, it makes sense. It stands to reason that yeah. it could be something like this because they existed. Why wouldn't the 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 Neanderthal or whatever, I'm not, you know, whatever. They didn't have language was, to perverse it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and they didn't have media to fuck it up. And, you know, but also no one to tell them that it's disgusting that you're eating a shit mushroom um, because that's where they said they probably found them was on the droppings of the buffalo and things like that, which mm -hmm. is freaking disgusting. But hey, you know what? Um, but to also think that that could be what stimulated their brain, even if it was stimulating it into, into a psychedelic trip, quote unquote, but then gave them the idea that, hey, hey, man, we could start a language <laughs> that would help us talk to each other. They're like, fuck, man, talk to each other. That's insane. <laughs> and but like, but it sparked that idea, right? That's human it evolution. It unlock that yeah. cognitive. Yeah. That kind of woke them that's up. That's crazy. And uh, that would explain little shiitake. Go ahead, little shiitake coming little at you. Shit. <laughs> little shit, <laughs> like, but that would explain. I mean, that would actually be a really good explanation. You know, one of the biggest, you know, one of the biggest questions when people talk about evolution and how we derive from apes is like nothing else in nature still exists from what it evolved from. Right. But if you think about if we if a group of Neanderthals like they were all exactly the same, mm -hmm. all, all the, exactly the same, same level of the evolutionary mm -hmm. cycle. And this group over here 
is the one who found these yes. magic mushrooms. And so they evolved into what we are today. Mm -hmm. But these over here did not because they did not find these mushrooms. And that would be why we still have apes today. Right. Like well, that is crazy. Right. But that is like a lot of times in nature, the most logical thing, like Dr. Spock would say from Star Trek, uh -huh. you know, the most logical thing is, is typically the correct, is typically the correct answer it's right. the most logical i mean well, that that does make sense occam's razor right occam's razor yeah, yeah. like um, it yeah yeah that, that's crazy that, that was a trip bro and there was a nice <laughs> visual of the neanderthal eating, literally picking the mushroom the shit from mushroom. the shit yeah. <laughs> and putting it in his mouth and that was i mean that was like, that was live footage live. from oh, evolution oh wow where did they oh, get yeah. that oh, yeah. cool. they had cameras Back they then. were That's so they evolved. They must have really had a lot of magic mushrooms. Yeah, yeah there was more technology back. back then than you knew. <laughs> yeah. Um. All right. Uh. Anything? Anything else? We feel like we've we skipped over before we keep going. I mean, are we talking about anything that we were like, eh? Yeah. So you know, I think that <laughs> how it ended for thirty minutes. Yeah. So that that was going to be my, my the only thing that I mentioned as far this uh this documentary that I didn't really, that, that I thought was a little <laughs> awkward. Yeah. Awkward. And it seemed like it, it, it was, um, unusual for, for the, the type of documentary that it was. I, I felt like you could have done better than that. And that is, uh, I felt like it was setting up the end of the documentary for the last 45 minutes of the documentary. Uh, it just never ended. It felt like, you know, the way the music came in, the way it was filmed, the way they had these little catchy quotes about changing the world with the power of turkey tails. And, and the, the same know. visuals from earlier. Yeah, yeah. Being reused. Repeat, repeating visuals. Thank you. And, you know, go, but then they went back into the story of how his mom got cured. And then they went back into this is, this is the power of the mushroom and what it can do for our planet. Orgasm. Yeah. And then, Back into the, the, you know, I'm going there. I think there was five different points where I could have pointed, like, it's about to be done, and we're back into this. <laughs> so that was a little bit annoying. But um, the other thing that I, and I didn't realize this until after we finished watching it and I started doing my notes for this episode, the other thing that felt a little bit uh, kind of shitty, I guess, to me was after I did... I watched it and I and I went to the website. I looked up Fantastic Fungi Documentary. And the very first website is the website for the documentary, which also happens to be the website that you can go buy a whole bunch of these mushroom products. And um, it's literally an online store for this guy's... Uh, and I think, maybe I'm wrong here, but I'm pretty sure this was the same company that uh, the mushroom hat guy owns and runs so after that i felt like god damn it this was a a really well-made commercial because they wanted you to look into this go where can i when we were watching i remember uh, whether it was me or one of you guys saying something along the lines of where do i get that shit well, it's hard for me to believe that they didn't intend for you to say, where do I get that shit? Look up that documentary and then go, oh, uh, conveniently, I can, <laughs> I can get this can on the website. Online, yeah. okay. uh, so, you know, it's kind of like it felt like, oh, damn it. Some of the unanswered questions were wanting to push units, in my opinion. So, you know, that that kind of put a little bit of a bad taste, not enough to make me dislike the documentary or to think that the information was any less relevant. Um, but it, it was just like, God, God damn it. Is 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 true uh, information giving and artistry out the window because you want now to sell your products, which the other side of me goes, I'm glad you're having this available and, and and giving us the access to these products that could be life changing for some people. So anyway, any yeah, thoughts perhaps on that? They were just trying to be as you know sensitive as they could to the sales process. Yeah, with that. But yeah, I mean, I definitely felt that too because he even says, "Well, I'm not a businessman. I just have a business with 300 employees and a huge building." Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, all these products, but I'm not a businessman. Yeah, but I mean, one could definitely say with most most documentaries that there is a, a motive or a bias. Um, maybe uh, bias isn't the word I'm looking for, but that that there is a 
purpose behind the documentary, no matter what it's about. An and agenda, maybe? An agenda. That's probably the word I'm okay. looking for. And so, I mean, I'm okay with the agenda being... Something good. I want yeah. to educate you Agreed. on this and then I want to make it available to you. Right. Um, if you're leaving your customer or your watchers wondering what point. to do next, then you have only done half of what's needed for the yeah. people watching. You've given them the information, but not a path to get there. Yeah. And that's a really good point. That's, yeah. And and I think we there has been documentaries that we watched for the show that you walk away going, okay, but now what? Like when we watched Fed Up, for example, like there's all this information about the food we eat and the sugars we consume and how addictive they are and all this. And then it's kind of like, good luck, motherfucker. <laughs> you know, like- <laughs> The documentaries like, that give you anxiety. Go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's a good point. Thank you for uh, bringing that up, yeah. uh, my little lion's mane over there. Yeah. Um, little shit, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> little shit. No, it's the shit. Oh, we, the we shit. Yeah, okay. the shit. No, the, just the shit. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, I didn't know about that website. Um, but, you know, I think kind of, it's a little frustrating hearing that because mm. you want, you, you want and you hope that people are genuine. Um, and, but I do, on the other hand of that, um, I do feel if they were really trying to push that, I feel like that would have been at the end or something like, mm -hmm. Hey, go to our website. And then it, it was something like that, but they didn't do that. So yeah. I feel like you found that cause you were interested in, sure. in more information yep. and maybe they didn't want to push that to, so they didn't come off like that. I mean, we'll never know obviously right. what their but secondary that, agenda was, yeah. but that's like, a good point though, because that's just, that reinforces what, what bird just said, you know, the, it wasn't thrown in my face at the end of that, like to find out more, come see at my website because we'll sell you all kinds of shit that you don't need. No, it was like you just said, and to, to underline that it took me going and researching it and it was easily available because of watching it. It wasn't so, so I'm, I'm kind of, thank you both because you're kind of helping me to, to re view that. And well, in yeah, not way. to be overly broad, but um, you know, the, documentary being on netflix you know netflix being a company that is about you know the content they put out is uh, they're not trying to hold that content back from us and that kind of makes me feel like okay maybe there's you know it's something good at heart yeah. behind it like hey we're we don't want to hold back content because this content is it, when you think about how criminalized mushrooms are yeah and psilocybin is and for them to release a documentary that just allows for that language and that dialogue to be said without censorship right in that general sense you know i like that that they can yeah. show his business yeah, without to him Netflix, going really. to without him going to jail i mean you're talking right. about potential probable cause <laughs> right. and yet yeah. it's not and they're fighting for that decriminalization of that word and that product and i will say i don't the fact that they're allowing that on there I yeah like and i will say that i don't know that psilocybin itself is available on its website <laughs> um, i think it they, is not okay i <laughs> checked okay thank you. i was gonna say i, I she, again I, she's course, not on mushrooms but she <laughs> lion's check. mane lion's mane turkey tail the 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 ones that are not psychedelic yeah okay um i mean but you know so sort of continuing on that um you know what was what i did really like is how they didn't just the whole thing wasn't about talking shit on big pharma and there yeah. wasn't really they didn't really talk about that like there was definitely openings for that and like i think that's good it's like there's already enough division there's already enough back and forth in this mm -hmm. side and these people are wrong and these people are evil and these people suck like it's already enough of that shit yeah. and so it's kind of nice it's like they i feel like he was really genuine i here's, feel like it's just a genuine information you're yeah. looking for it like yeah. this is how it helped me this is how it's helped other people yeah. And I feel like they were really professional when they just to bank off that really professional and how they represented the, mm -hmm. you know, they just mentioned the criminalization. They said, here's the years it happened. Here's the year when we were able to start, you know, doing research again. They just gave that this is what happened. Um, and so that just shows that, you know, there isn't this agenda pushing. They're not trying to silence what happened. They just said, this is what happened. And we're super excited to be back at it. And yeah. that just kind of creates mm -hmm. a certain credibility that we don't see a lot yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you're looking at it from the media Less perspective bashing. so i really liked i yeah. really liked that part yeah i agreed i agree 100 um uh so 
as we get into the next portion of the documentary, which is our ratings and things like that, I do want to ask, um, who uh, have if you're comfortable sharing, have any of you experienced psychedelic mushrooms? I know we've kind of talked about that. Andrew, uh, yes, L- little shit. Let's start with <laughs> little, little shit. shit. Uh, yes, uh, a number of times. What was your experience my... like, uh, um, DJ? DJ, cue the trippy music. Go. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> um, my experience was more, uh, it was not like this glorious, uh, you know, it was, it was the, it was the more trippy kind. I thought we were getting invaded by ice cream, <laughs> ice cream cone, uh, weapon wielding cows from space. Oh, yeah. Um, and it was <laughs> fucking trippy. It, yeah. I mean, I was convinced, I mean, we were getting invaded by these literally like almost like lightsaber, but they were like seven stack eight cone. stack ice cream cones <laughs> That's fucking and rude. it was fucking scary i was just laying there and it was fucking wild <laughs> um that was probably the most memorable one i only took the like mushrooms a, yeah. a couple times and i just the second i think it was like second or third it was just terrible yeah i can't i don't really remember it was bad just like trip. very very bad and i just decided never to take them again yeah. um at that point but the, that was in my 1920 maybe yeah how about you cordyceps <laughs> Yes, many cordyceps. <laughs> yeah, many many cordyceps. No, it did have a number of experiences. Kind of the same thing. Um, you know, ate them a few times. I actually had a few really really good experiences before I had a really bad one that turned me away. Yeah. Um, you know, a few of the really good experiences was being outside, uh, in nature. Um, and while he was having a very specific kind of visual experience, you know, um, everybody experiences a little different. Mine was a little bit more on the, uh, the mental and emotional mm-hmm. side, but you could really feel. Um, and a lot of people would um, have this similar experience of just kind of the trees and the grass and the, and the gravel and around kind of breathing mm-hmm. on you and uh, kind of just spending time uh, in reflection. Absorbing that, yeah. And uh, kind of felt like I was processing thoughts that I should have been thinking about, um, <laughs> about decisions I would make. Yeah. Uh, and I would just sit there and contemplate uh, for hours on end on the most basic thing, like, should I have eaten that <laughs> ship? Or the should ant hill? I, yeah. Should I have went to this ant hill? <laughs> should I have left it behind? So it became a very philosophical, very just yeah. deep <laughs> thinking over the most mindless of things. Um, yeah. <laughs> and in hearing you talk about that, it's funny because, you know, the the to think of somebody going on a, a wild trip like that's hilarious but it's hard to hear that and not think you probably were opening up a side of your brain that that could be very fucking useful maybe you were tapping <laughs> into very, i felt very were, connected to that animal. yeah yeah you were tapping and i remember that story like you were you guys were just standing like staring down at this ant hill just yeah. feeling like you were an ant crawling into the ant hill. it's like maybe that's and what that was you were hurt these in. ants yeah you were yeah. Know, we were just very uh you know very happy that we were there with them we didn't want to leave yeah um thinking about the metamorphosis of life while uh sitting there staring down at this little tiny ant yeah. hill that's <laughs> we thought it was huge i imagine yeah in, in retrospect <laughs> I, it was probably just a speck of dust there was probably no ants yep <laughs> Bird, any any experiences? Uh, no. Okay, me neither. <laughs> uh, all right, we ready to go into ratings, everybody? Yes. Rating all time. right, rating, rating. time. Um, no, so normally we talk about how we feel and all that after watching it. I don't really think we need to get into that because we've been talking about our uh, our feelings and and how those have been amplified from the mushrooms we all ate. Um, finally, we've come to the part of our show where we need to rate the documentary with the official documentary rating. Each crew member scores the documentary on a scale of 1 to 10 items, uh, with 1 being as bad as Big Pharma not accepting the mycological treatments to ailments because it doesn't make them any money, and 10 being as magical as a perfectly guided micro trip. The item that we use for scoring change uh, for scoring changes every week, depending on the documentary, and this week we have chosen... Sporgasms. Sporgasms. Uh, I don't remember what in the film he mentioned sporgasm. And I don't It's when the guy why. was doing the the farming with with the lady and they were in the in the little field. Oh yeah. Oh, sporgasm. Uh, when, when they were working in the, the field. Other, when he was flirting with he the was other. Flirting yeah. with her. Uh, it's yep. so gross. But it's a fun word. <laughs> they cut the camera away. 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna sporgasm. Yeah, okay. Vicious, brutal, fungus <laughs> sex. Uh let's start <laughs> with uh with uh Lion's Mane over there. How many sporgasms? Eight sporgasms. Eight sporgasms. You want to talk about why you scored at that at all? Or uh probably everything I already said. Yeah, I enough. just really <laughs> Like all the information, I like natural healing options. I think yeah. humans need to return to nature and think medicine has its place, but I love something that gives us options and research, credible yeah. research to help heal other ways that doesn't also harm our body at the same time. Very good. Um, our cat Finley just jumped onto a uh, little shiitake's lap and he's over there rubbing her face on the microphone. So if you heard that, that's what that was. Um, but on that note, little shit, <laughs> little shiitake, uh, how many sporgasms, sir? So I'm going to give it a seven. Okay. Seven sporgasms. Seven sporgasms. I'll care to, pin you. Care to elaborate on that <laughs> at all? Or um, I mean, overall, I really, really enjoyed it. I do think, like we sort of touched on. <laughs> Could you stop her from? Doing yeah, that? But, okay, <laughs> let's get you off there, little girl. <laughs> Sorry, I don't. I never want to kick a cat off my lap. That is just Aww. against the law. Aww, yeah, it that is. Was um, so sad. <laughs> she cried. So yeah, bit. overall, I really, I really, really enjoyed the documentary. I do feel like, yeah, like the, um, what really it was just that thirty minute ending, like. Mm -hmm. I feel like that was just, it was just a, a little repetitive there Not at much. the end. Like there was just a lot of repeating what was already said, like, like, you know, just the double back, yeah, like the same animations. And it was like, okay, yep. I think we're, we're good. Yep. Like let's, let's end it. Yep. Um, but overall, I mean, I, I did, I did love it, but for that reason. And then I did think like part of me, um, Brie Larson, um, was the like narrator and, yeah. Overall, I mean, that was like a cool like idea where they basically she was the mushrooms yeah. or she was the fungus. Um, but it was but the, I just don't think it was executed like I think they were hoping it would be. And I thought she was, was just the star little, power behind the, yeah. the doc and it was unnecessary. In yeah, a lot if of it ways. was if yeah. it was her and maybe that what uh Addenbacher or whatever his name is. David, the dude Attenborough. That, David yeah. Attenborough. There we go, man. If it was David Attenborough, yeah. oh, 100 percent. Yeah, that'd it, be a 10, 10 out of sure. 10. Yeah, I agree. I think she did a great job yeah. for what it was, but it was probably the most unnecessary part yeah. of the uh, documentary. Um, cordyceps, Brent. Cordyceps. Uh, so I give it an eight out of 10. Okay. I'm going to keep my feelings to myself. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. No, you're fine. Um, I kind of feel the same thing about Brie Larson. You said right at the very beginning, I didn't like her. Totally yep. true for anyone listening. Do not like her at all. <laughs> um, I thought she did a good job. I thought it made it a little hokey. Uh, one of the yeah. reasons I gave it the eight out of 10 is I just, you know, I'm all for uh, wanting the message to get sent strategically. Mm -hmm. You know, what their goal is divine, right? What we heard and what the what these can do. Mm hmm. Um, and what I'm looking for in a documentary and just from how we start to communicate better as people with these yeah. things is being more calculated, being more specific. Get the hokey pokey stuff out of there. Yeah. Get Brie Larson pretending to be a mushroom out of there. Totally unnecessary. Yeah. You know, I didn't need to see clips of Woodstock or whatever they were yeah. showing yeah. Um, because not because I don't want to see it, but because I understand there's a strategy Right. That you should be trying to have that's now missing because somebody that you might be trying to reach mm -hmm. is now going to be disenchanted and think, oh, this is all goofy. Right. So you almost like shooting yourself in the foot. Yeah. When a it, little bit. When it comes to, you know, the the filming of a documentary versus the filming of a, a mega blockbuster movie or something, you know, I, I think some of the you you try to fill the time gap and unfortunately sometimes it it's not as well executed as you know for for a major like marvel movie or something where you've got all the money in the world and all the people involved and right. you know you're trying to to fit it into this this certain amount of time and so every scene is completely you know, relevant and to the storyline and all that well with a documentary you don't necessarily have those same kind of right. uh uh Constraints. You know, constraints. And if you if if you're trying to fit it into a certain time frame and you don't have enough to to do that, just make a shorter documentary. I can promise you no one in this room would have would have 
cared if that was a 45 minute documentary as opposed to what it was. It was packed hour and a half, I think. Yeah. yeah it was an hour and a half. That's yeah. long. I would, long. I would have been perfectly okay with that yeah. and still gotten the same thing out of it. Um, for those reasons, me, Captain Rishi over here, um, I gave it a six. Um, yeah. I mean, it is what it is. The, uh, it wasn't bad. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it more because I got to sit and watch it with all of you. Um, I do think that that's a piece that sometimes gets lost in the film uh, watching experience, especially with like, if I'm watching it down here by myself, um, I might not get the same out of it as if I'm watching it with a group of people that, that I like to watch films with. Right. Um, but with that being said, I am in complete agreement with you guys. I, I think it fell short just a little bit on, um, Am I am I just a visual documentary to show you how cool all this stuff looks, or am I an educational one? And I feel like those clashed against each other just a little bit, um, but not to take anything away from the documentary itself because it it was it was really good. So uh, with my six uh, cordyceps, gave it eight. Uh, Mister Little Shiitake over there gave a seven, and the lovely Lion's Mane gave it eight. So that means our official documentary rating for Fantastic Fungi is 7.25 Sporgasms. Brent, Andrew, thank you guys for joining us this week. Bird, I love having you down here. Thank you for being down here. You're welcome. Uh, I want you all to know that if I ever did decide to eat an entire bag of magic mushrooms and just take it straight to the dome, um, I hope you're all up in that tree with me. Um, oh, yeah. Make me keep my clothes on, please. Okay. Uh, no uh, promises. Damn it. You're going to do unnatural things to that tree. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Next week on Talkumentary, we're going to be celebrating our nation's Independence Day. So in celebration of America. 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 Fuck yeah. (laughs) Uh, We're going to be watching a one hour and 27 minute documentary called Hillbilly. Uh, This film examines the iconic Hillbilly image uh, in media and culture. I happen to know that we have a very special guest joining us for that. Uh, someone who also who embraces the hillbilly image and does it with pride and aggression, ruthless aggression. We will be joined next week by one half of the current pro wrestling Phoenix tag team champions, professional wrestler Moonshine Russell will be joining us. So make sure you check us out. That's going to be a lot of fun. Um, He will have his flask of moonshine with him. He did promise me that. So, um, have any of you guys seen or heard of Hillbilly? No. Nope. I don't know about Hillbillies other than they use rope for belts. (laughs) That's what I know about Hillbillies. You are a wealth of knowledge, my friend. (laughs) Any predictions about what that one's going to be like? A lot of people wearing ropes for belts. Okay, <laughs> fair enough. Uh, I think it's going to be eye-opening because I yeah. have seen the trailer. I haven't watched the documentary yet. I, I do know that this is a some a, a culture that is stereotyped often uh, to you know to be a certain maybe they wear ropes for belts. Right, that's a stereotype yeah. uh, to may, maybe have a, a mental capacity that is not where uh, on par with the rest. And I think that's probably false. And I think that's probably what the. Uh, um, the documentary is going to try to show so that's my my predictions for that but we'll see please go out and check out the documentary hillbilly before next week's episode it can be streamed on tubi uh so you'll watch some ads but we can deal with that because it's free right uh join us as we tape together a whole bunch of really big fireworks set up a lawn chair in the middle of the street and we try to hold on to all of our fingers and toesies as we celebrate our country's independence one documentary at a time Uh, Also, please go out, rate and review our podcast on your favorite podcast streaming service and let us know what you think of our show. Uh, If you want to connect with us, look for at Documentary Podcast on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, or email us, like I mentioned earlier, at info.documentary at gmail.com. Bird, Brent, Andrew, the Lundin kids, uh, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Happy to be here. Thank you, Beba. <laughs> Beba. Babe. Beba. Thanks, Daddy. Beba. Stop uh, say, that, say that again. <laughs> nope. Call me yeah, Daddy. One time. <laughs> Call me Daddy. Uh, on behalf of Bird, Brent, Andrew, or should I say Lion's Mane, uh, Little Shiitake, oh, 
<laughs> and Mr. Cordyceps, uh, I am Captain Reishi or Jeff Kalaski. I am your host. Thank you all for joining us. Um, I want to thank you for listening. I hope you keep your minds open and maybe so open that you fill up those receptors with psilocybin and just really listen to this whole episode and get everything you can out of it. And maybe we'll start doing some ASMR or something. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> keep your minds open. Be kind to one another. We'll see you next week. Bye. 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 <laughs> I, I want to punch you in the face. <laughs>